So my name is Marco. I am a PhD student at the University of Washington, working with Carlos Gastrin. Um, so this work is called Why Should I Trust You? Explaining the Predictions of Any Classifier. Um, and the main task we're addressing is um, explaining individual predictions from machine learning models. What does that have to do with trust? Well, as we've seen in this workshop, a lot of times uh, machine learning models are black boxes. I have here an example uh, of a neural network, for example. And if you tell a doctor, look, you need to do surgery, um, probability 90% because of my neural network sensor, the doctor is probably not going to do anything. However, we envision a system where you have the model, and then you have um, an explanation system that takes out parts of the input in the prediction and shows it to the user. So for example, you say, look, this patient has the flu because he's sneezing and he has a headache. Even though he doesn't have fatigue, like showing a bit of a con, we think he has the flu. And it's much more likely that the doctor is going to trust that prediction. In the same way, if you have a, a machine learning person, like someone at Google or Facebook deploying a machine learning model, before they deploy it, they need to trust that the machine learning system is going to perform adequately. That it's not going to be doing embarrassing mistakes, that it's going to be better than what you currently have. And what we propose is that the, the analyst would um, look at individual predictions picked by the model, and then you make a decision. Now, people do trust machine learning models right now. They're using them everywhere. And one of the ways that they measure trust is by looking at accuracy. So if the system has really high accuracy, usually people trust it. If not, they don't. And we're arguing that accuracy is not enough. Um, accuracy is really good, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and you can overestimate your accuracy. So here we show some example explanations, I think, which exemplify this. In the first case, we're showing um, a, an explanation for a prediction in the 20 news groups data set. We're trying to distinguish between atheism or Christianity documents. And you have a document here on the right um, from the data set, and it's predicted as atheism. So this is a correct prediction. This document is about atheism. However, what the random forest in this case is picking up on is stuff that is completely irrelevant to religion. It's picking up on email headers. It's picking up on stuff that is really helpful in this particular data set, but not particularly helpful for the task we actually care about. So this is a model you shouldn't trust, but a lot of people do because it has high accuracy. On the bottom here, we're explaining the predictions of a neural network on images. Um, and the top three predictions are electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and Labrador. Now, even though the system got it wrong, this is an acoustic guitar, you see that the rationale for it makes sense. Like, it predicts electric guitar because it looks at this part of the guitar, which looks like an electric guitar, and so on. So this may be a more trustworthy model based on this prediction. Of course, you'd look at a bunch of them. Now, we don't want to depend on specific models. We want to be able to explain any classifier. And the way we do that is by, there are a few key ideas. The first one is we use, we approximate the black box model um, locally instead of globally. So here we have this figure to give some intuition. Here we have in um, blue and pink a decision function to do for a really complicated model. And you see it really is complicated. It's squiggly, it's going everywhere. There is no way that I could approximate this function by a line. However, if I'm trying to explain this particular prediction here, in the vicinity of it, it kind of looks like a line, the decision function. So a line could approximate it very faithfully, close to this example, but not globally. And the way we generate that approximation, if it's a line, for example, in 2D, is by generating samples, perturbing the original data, and then weighing those samples by how close they are to the original point we're trying to explain. More concretely, here if we have an image, for example, of a lion, we perturb it by hiding parts of it, let's say, for example. And this part, this image here, um, that we, we hit almost all of the image, so it will be, would have low weight in our model. In the end, we learned some interpretable model that we can explain, for example, linear model. In this case, we're saying that we learned this linear model here, where the face of the line is really positive and the back of the line is really, it's negative towards class line or something. And we just showed the positive part. So the key idea is approximating a black box by an interpretable model locally instead of globally. Now, this is all about explaining individual predictions. For explaining models, we said that we would show the user a set of examples. Now, how we select those examples is really important. We, we don't want to just show users random examples, because that can be wasteful. And in a nutshell, um, 
summarizing it a lot, what we do is we want to pick examples that are representative but not redundant. And we have some specific submodular optimization um, framework to do that. But we want to pick examples where the explanations are going to be representative of the model, I meaning they're going to show aspects of the model that occur a lot, but uh, instances that are not redundant amongst themselves. In terms of experiments, um, um, the first set of experiments we did was determining whether or not this kind of methodology could explain models that are not black boxes. So we picked models for which we know what the ground truth explanations are, really simple models, and saw if we could recover those explanations. And the answer is we could. With high accuracy, we can reproduce the explanations of simple models. Then we took a more complicated model, in particular the one we had for um, for the Christianity versus atheism example I, I referenced before, that data set had a lot of problems. So what we did is we constructed a new hidden data set that didn't have those problems and tried to train a model on the problematic data set and, and applying this model on the good data set. And we constructed two sets of classifiers, one using the features that are really useful in the bad um, data set and one not using those features. Now, of course, in that data set, if you're exploiting features such as headers, your accuracy is going to go up. But on the hidden data set, it's going to go down. In the end, we showed users explanations for both models and had them select which model they preferred. The users here didn't know about the existence of the hidden set, were not machine learning experts. They just were people with common knowledge. But by seeing the explanations and using our technique for selecting instances, they were able to select the classifier that generalizes better 89% of the time. So these are non-machine learning experts. And if they were relying on accuracy alone, they would select the, the worst classifier always because it had way better accuracy on the data that they did have. In a nutshell, this is a really summarized version of it, but we have way more details and experiments on an extended version of our archive and all of our code is open source. So if you want to generate some explanations for any model, just take a look at this GitHub repo. Thanks.